Yo, what is up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different. Been a long time, been a minute. No, this weekend's been wild. I know you guys been waiting for some videos, but I've been busy trying to relax, you know, kick it, chill with the family, all that good mess. But now I am back here once again. Time to get to work and start making, you know, these videos and stuff like that. So today we're gonna be talking about sound selection because I know a lot of people are asking me, can I do a video on sound selection and what really it is and how you go about it and how do I improve it? So there's two ways to look at sound selection. One way is look at picking sounds that aren't conflicting with each other in um, the same frequency, meaning having too many sounds that have a lot of low, like low bass content or low bass information that can, you know, clash with each other and cause problems when mixing. Same with having too many, um, too many uh, sounds that had too much mid range frequency, you know, that can, you know, clash with the vocals and all that. You want to pick sounds that don't really fight with each other in certain frequencies. So, you know, I see a lot of people who pick like a ton of sounds, like 15, 20 sounds in their beat, and it's hard for them to mix it because they're all conflicting with each other and it's kind of hard to make them all balanced. So, that can be one way of working with sound selection. Another way is picking sounds that aren't, you know, that, that fit the type of beat or song that you're making. You don't want to pick really, really cheesy old school sounds for a modern type of track. You know what I'm saying? And same for you don't want to pick really, really modern sounds for an old school type of track. You know, and also you don't want to pick like really, really cheap sounds, you know, because that can really, like, just because you have a, a you can play nice chords and all that, and I'll show you an example. If the sound really isn't that a high quality sound, like a very good sampled sound or, you know, whatever from a good VST or whatever you get, then it can still sound very weak and cheesy. So I'm going to show you both ways. The first one, look at the one where if you have, you know, two of the same plugins, two of the same type of plugins using the same chords, how they can very, very you know, differently sound different, you know, to make them sound good. So. First off, we're gonna start off with, I'm gonna use two pianos, cause I mean, everybody should have pianos. So I have two pianos pulled up. I have FL Keys, which everybody should have. FL Keys been around since FL Studio began. It's a very cheaply processed, sampled out keyboard that just come with FL Studio. Very default, it's like three megabytes at the most, which is ridiculous, that is like lame, but this is like the original key. That's the original, so it's used original. But yeah, so it's, it's very like, it's very beginner and starter pack. And then we have Contact. I'm using my Contact. I don't have Keyscape, which Keyscape is the best piano plugin out right now. I mean, you can't beat Keyscape. I don't have it right now, so until then, I'm using Contact. I'm using the Granular because it's my favorite keyboard. It's a very high-quality sampled-out keyboard. You know, they sampled out a really nice concert grand piano in different velocities and all that good mess, so you have a lot of layers and all that stuff. So it just sounds good with good microphones and all that stuff. So basically, let's say they're both piano plugins. So let me get the sound about the way. They're both piano plugins. Nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, I had the same kind of melody. I have the same kind of melody going. I play, uh, plug this in. This actually comes from my Cold Winter MIDI loop pack, which I put in the description below. If you want to get that over fifty presets, fifty MIDI loops, and you know a ton of presets for sound of. So yeah, I'm using one of them in here. As you can see, it's very integral and very melodic, or whatever. But anyway, um, so yeah. Now I'm gonna play through the keys and I'm gonna switch there and then we'll talk about it. So you can hear the difference between them. first let's play through the keys with the same, like I said, it's the exact same MIDI loops, nothing changed, no, they're not being processed, no effects, whatnot. So let's dive into it. Okay, as you hear, it's very, very bad sounding. <laughs> very bad. Let's switch to the, the grand piano, which come with like the FL. I think FL 12 comes with this and FL 11, so it should sound a little bit better. So it sounds a little bit better, not by much, but it does sound, you know, a little bit better. But you get the idea. This is like the baseline for everybody. Everybody should have that. Um, it says it's, it's very just eh, what it is. Now let's play the contact library with the same MIDI loop. So it's the exact same MIDI loop. As you see, I just clicked over the contact one, exact same MIDI loops. So here we go.
as you can hear, it's a big difference. And why is that? Because, like I said, it's sampled better. Like I said, it has different velocities. Yeah, you can hear, like, when it plays these low notes right here, you really hear the piano get softer. And, like, in Fruity Keys, although it has the same, you know, the same, like, velocity set, um, they didn't sample it to where it plays notes softer, depending on how you play it. So, you know, you can... It sounds the same no matter how hard you hit the key. You know, it just lowers the volume. Here, it actually plays softer. you know, depending on how hard you hit the keyboard. So that's one thing you got to look out for when you you choose the sounds. You want to pick the sounds that sound the best that you possibly can own. I know everybody doesn't have a lot of money out there. A lot of you guys are torrenting your stuff. A lot of you guys can afford this stuff. You know, you got jobs, kids, whatever. But you got to realize that, you know, the better, the more money you spend in certain aspects, you will get a better sound regardless. Point blank period. Like you spend money on stuff like this, like I said, contact by itself is like, too expensive. I say just get complete ultimate. Um, but you know, a thousand bucks, you get all these high quality sounds, get you started. Honest fear, 500 bucks, you get a bunch of great sounds, get started. You know, Keyscape, 400 bucks, great sound. Or you can just stick around, get all this free bullet BS and all this cheap stuff and you know, make stuff. But since, like I said, it won't sound pro level because, like I said, you're using very bad samples. So, definitely choose your samples wisely and choose your plugins wisely because like I said that will impact the way your beat sounds just because you have a really good melodic keys right here it still sounds kind of cheap you know what I'm saying if you're using the cheap keyboard sound no matter how good this is it's still going to sound cheap and boring now you can improve on it let's say add a little reverb to it let's just add a little reverb to it I use a very high quality reverb um, let's see we'll just use let me go here they got like keys yeah they do like key ambient you know it might add a little bit to it, you know add a little bit of reverb to it but still if you have a better sample better sample plug-in the reverb will make it sound a whole lot better Sounds a whole lot more live and more melodic, you know. So just keep that in mind. Your samples will determine that. Now, what about sounds that are occupying the same frequency? Um, that's another thing I see a lot of people doing. Like, for example, I got two basses right here. So one bass right here, and I got another one. Now, what happened is they'll put like I see people who will have like let's say they'll have like a regular bass line, so we'll just. Plug in the bass line real quick. And then we'll bring it up one. And then we'll, we'll copy this bass line, put the same one. And then we'll go here and we'll lower this one. And then we'll turn it on. All right. So they have two bases or something like that. Two bases are two sounds that occupy the same frequency range. Like I obviously see that both of these bases right here are occupying like the low notes. So we'll just put up an EQ real quick. EQ2. Let's show you an example. Bring it up. Now, if I play one, you see it's like 100 hertz, like 200, 100 hertz and below. That's where that bass is. Um, and if I go to the second one, About the same about the same frequency so when you play both of them together they start fighting for that same frequency range and you can see in the wave file how it's going all crazy and jittery and everything like that and it's really hard like i said to mix that and then they'll throw like a they put an 808 in there they have like a bass line like that then they'll get like a can i move this they'll get like a Let's see, get a replace with serum, with serum. Uh, here we go, and then they go with space sauce. They have a bass line. They have a have a bass, and they'll be trying to play a bass line, a 808 bass with another bass sound too. So. 
as you hear it sound like a whole bunch of low frequency garble garble garbage shit right so basically what you want to try to do is steer away from using too many sounds in the same frequency range like obviously these are both bases they're both sine wave there's both really low squares one's a low square one's a low triangle or something like that the very low notes the very they occupy that bass frequency and you it's gonna be hard to really mix them together because like i said they're fighting for the same frequency what you want to do is either choose one or the other or what you can do is like raise one a couple of octaves up so it's out of that low frequency range you know as the other one so now look at the oscilloscope up here it's not fighting with the other ones i mean i need to bring this one up too because it's too low you know, it's not going crazy and all jagged because, like I said, they're fighting for the same frequency. Um, you got to just keep in mind when you're picking sounds, you want to make sure sounds have their own space. That's how you get a good, clean mix. Like, the only way you're going to need a good, clean mix is if you have sounds that have their own space in your beat. And it's going to make it easier to mix. It's going to sound better. You'll be able to fit each instrument. Like I said, you want to fit your bass, your kick, your snare, your hi-hats, your sounds, your vocals, all that good stuff. You want to have it have their own space. That way, you know, it sounds like a clean mix. You can hear everything. If you have three or four sounds in the same range, most likely some of the sounds are going to cancel each other out, not work with each other, or, or, or like fight for each other. And it's going to sound really bad in that certain frequency. So you just really got to listen and pay attention to what kind of sounds you pick. I see, I see a lot of people, I see it. You just start picking sounds that sound good and throwing it in there, not thinking, could this sound mess with this other sound? You have to really think and stop and think about that to actually decide if it's going to work or not. So... Yeah, that's just a little bit about sound selection. It's nothing too deep. It's just be careful with your sounds. Pick the best sound that you have at your disposal. And also pick sounds that don't fight with each other. That way you can have a clean mix. And that's the only way you're going to get clean mix. Because like I said, you guys have trouble mixing. And this will help you be able to mix a little bit better, a little bit easier, in my opinion. So that's that. That's all about. I'm going to tell you about sound selection. All you need to know it is what it is. You like it, you don't. Um, hope you guys got something out of it. Hope you guys enjoy it like always. Um, Y'all know what it is. Your boy Slim, a.k.a. Miss Different. Um, yeah, if you want to get this mini loop pack, it's at TV, it's at my, I said the link below. Also check out TBL Sounds for some good stuff as well. If you want to, it doesn't really matter. Do what you do. But yeah, um, with that being said, yeah, leave a comment, like, comment, subscribe, dislike, hate, whatever. I don't give a fuck anymore. You know, do what you do. And yeah, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. Blah, blah, blah. I'll see you guys in the next video, like always. So guess what, everybody? Have a good one.